In this video, we are going to investigate what is known as summation notation. A summation, as the name indicates, is when you are taking the sum of many objects. So this is the notation used. to represent <clears throat> the sum of a collection of numbers. Now, the most general version of summation notation that we can use is going to look like this. So first off, the symbol that you see here is known as the capital sigma. Sigma is a Greek letter. Roughly translated, it would be S, and S is used for summation. So that's why we go with the capital S. I is referred to as an index. An index starts at a given value So the starting value of the index. And it increments going up one at a time. Index increases by one at a time. B is going to be the ending value of the index. That f of i that you see over to the right of the capital sigma, this is the quantity being added, or the quantity being summed. So in the given notation, if I were to expand this out to let you know the things that are being added, the first thing that I would do is plug i equals a into this function, whatever it happens to be, so f of a. Because it's a summation, we're then going to add the next number, that is what I get when I add 1 to this value, so f of a plus 1. Then the index continues to go up one at a time until we get to whatever that last value is. To give you an idea of what this might look like if we actually had some numbers in here, I could ask for the summation from i equals 2 to 6 of 2i minus 1. So if I were to expand this out, first thing I would do is plug in i equals 2 to the given function. So this would be 2 times 2 minus 1. And that represents i equals 2. Plus, repeat the process, increasing the value of the index by 1 at a time. Since we just did 2, next we do 3. Then we do 4. Then 5. then 6. And 6 is where I stop because that's the value that's indicated at the top of the summation notation. So this would be 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. And some quick arithmetic lets me know that that is equal to 35. Another example that we could do, we could do the summation from i equals 0 to 4 of 3 raised to the i power. <clears throat> so this time the function that I'm plugging things into would be 3 raised to the i power. So that would be 3 raised to the first point would be 0 plus 3 raised to the first power, the index goes up one at a time until we get to our stopping point at 3 raised to the fourth power. This will be equal to 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81. 
and some quick arithmetic lets me know that that sum is 121. Now on occasion, we are going to see that rather than a definitive stopping point, we're going to leave this simply open-ended. So there are going to be several properties of summation notations with which you will want to familiarize yourself. So these properties of summation notation are the following. If I take the summation from i equals 1 to whatever ending point, we'll call it n, of a sum of two different kinds of summations, you can interpret this to mean a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 plus a3 plus b3 plus this pattern will continue all the way up till you get to whatever your ending n value is. Now that means that what I could do is group all of the a terms together and group all of the b terms together and split this up into two different summations. Similarly, if I had a difference of multiple terms in here. Using the same logic as what we used above, I can split this up so that all of the A terms are grouped together, and then subtract all of the B terms grouped together. Additionally, if I had a common factor for all of the terms, the common factor being just some constant, I can factor that constant out of the summation, just like you would with a greatest common factor. You'll notice that all of the rules that we have here are the same as the rules that we see for derivatives. If you want to differentiate a sum, you simply differentiate the individual functions, then add them together. If you want to differentiate a difference, then you differentiate each individually and then subtract the result. For a constant multiple, you can pull the constant multiple out. It is not a coincidence. Now there are a couple of summation formulas that you will need to know as well. These summation formulas are the following. If you take a constant and add it to itself a total of n times, then what you have there is the definition of multiplication. Once you add something to itself n times, that would be the product of n and whatever the constant happened to be. Next up, if I were to add together the first n positive integers, so this would represent 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus dot 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 plus some ending point. This one is attributed to Carl Gauss. You may have heard the name or the, the term Gauss before, or Gaussian. The shortcut for this is multiply n times n plus 1 all over 2. For example, if I wanted to add up the first 10 positive integers, I could do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, or I could say 10 times 11 divided by 2, which would be 55. The result is the same either way. This is simply a shortcut. Now this is provable, but the easiest way to prove it is by taking discrete mathematics. If you're interested in the proof, let me know, and I'd be happy to outline the proof for you. Another summation formula you will want to know is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus dot 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 all the way up to n squared. There is a shortcut for this as well, and it is to take n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Now, despite the fact that this thing is being divided by 6, it's always guaranteed that the numerator will be 
a multiple of 6. Therefore, you don't need to worry about the fractions. They will cancel out. And finally, the summation from i equals 1 to n of i cubed is the same as this formula over here, with the exception that the result is squared. For example, if I wanted to add together 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed, I could simply plug n equals 4 into this formula and get 4 times 5 divided by 2, which is 10, squared, which is 100. That lets me know that 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed is 100. This is just a little shortcut to help you out with these summations. We'll talk about their application in future videos.